So about two weeks ago, I started working on a new brand and I want to start a video series to document every step of the way to build this brand from scratch to seven figures. But more importantly, this is called a bootstrap brand series because I'm going to start with only $5,000 of budget and I'm also working a full-time job, so I have very limited time to work on it. So in this first video, I'm gonna share with you some exciting stuff. So how I found the idea, why I really like it, how I came up with a really good and unique brand name for the idea, um, some of the polls that I ran to customers to get some insight into the market, um, how I registered the company in like 24 hours, um, and how I came up with some of the first designs for the products. I'm also gonna share with you how everything costs so I think you're going to be pretty surprised to see that I do everything on the cheap because at the end of the day, I'm spending my own money um, and I want to make sure that I get the most out of every dollar that I spend. So I think this is going to be really motivating for you to watch. I think you're going to get some crucial tips on how to develop successful products on Amazon and how I go about doing things really quickly and efficiently. Now, if you're new to this channel, my name is Max and I sold over seven figures of products on Amazon. In 2021, I sold my business and I now work as a head of product development for an eight-figure aggregator based in Singapore. Now, before we start, I have to apologize to you guys that I'm not gonna be able to share the actual brand name and the actual product uh, for reasons that I can't really get into in this video. That said, I'm gonna do my best to share everything else around that to make sure that you get as much information and value out of this as possible. So I found this idea just doing normal keyword research like I usually do, and I came across this keyword that I found was really interesting. It was a product that I never heard of before. So I really got immediately intrigued by the product, and once I started looking at the other keywords that were targeting this product, I found that this was a niche that was exploding in popularity. And I just kept thinking about it for like two or three months until about two weeks ago, where I decided to really execute and start a brand and a product around this idea. So there's three reasons why I personally really love this idea. Um, the first reason is the most important one. And this is something that I talk about in my other video on the three product research mistakes that you can make on Amazon. Um, and so go watch that if you haven't watched that already. Basically in that video, I talk about the idea of this, this idea of the painful problem. So this is a core problem that you have, which is an emotional uh, pain that you have, right? And that a brand and a product should be built around solving this specific problem. But it's really important that is a problem that you have so that you really understand the market that you're trying to serve. Um, and this was the case for this product. So this was a product that solved the problem that I have, that's a very painful problem of mine, and that I could see working for a lot of people. So that's what got me really excited about it. The second reason why I got excited about this product idea is because it's a new category, which means that a lot of the listings are newer, so they have uh, less reviews, and also a lot of the listings will have higher prices because there hasn't been that much price competition yet. Um, there's also a lot of opportunities to create sub niches within that category. Um, so it's usually uh, a lot more opportunities if a category is newer in the marketplace. And the third reason why I got really excited is because I actually came up with what I thought was a really good way to differentiate this product. Um, and I think that um, I'm gonna be able to compete even if the category is quite big and quite competitive. I think that I'm gonna come in with something very unique um, and uh, that's what got me excited as well. So now let's get into uh, five things that I've already done um, on the project in the past two weeks, uh, starting with number one. So number one thing that I did was actually free, which was um, I did a quick search to find uh, suppliers for this product. So I found a supplier uh, on Google and I saw that they could do the sample for I think $100 or less. Um, and I, I reached out to them, I confirmed that they could do it. Um, and for me, that was enough to move on uh, to the next step because I just kind of validated that I could get my prototype done and probably could find a supplier easily. Because I mean, if it was that easy uh, to find a supplier on Google like this, um, I thought that it wouldn't be a problem to find uh, uh, another supplier or more suppliers down the road. So then I moved on to step two, which was to create a brand name. Now I've literally created dozens of brand names in the past. So it's something I'm really experienced at and I can do quite quickly. The key thing that I find though, is that for a brand name to be really good, it needs to be focused around the core emotional problem that the customer has, and it needs to present a benefit that solves that problem. 
So creating a brand name for me can be really complex and it can take me a long time. But in this case, it actually was pretty simple. I just opened up a spreadsheet and I made two columns. So in that first column is where I list the benefit part of the name. And so usually it'll be a list of words um, that are synonyms or, or that represent uh, the same thing, which is a benefit um, that resolves the core emotional problem. And then on the right is actually a list of words that define um, the product being sold. So for example, um, you know, if you look at one of my previous videos where I do break down um, some of the brands that I launched that failed, uh, there's this one brand that was a skincare brand that um, I called Clear Derm, right? And so for example, for this product, um, I had the benefit and I had the descriptor, right? So for example, the benefit in this case would be clear. Um, so customers have, I don't know, um, greasy or dirty skin and the benefit is to have uh, clear skin, right? And derm actually was the word that described um, what the brand was about. So in this case, derm means skin. So, um, you know, I came up with probably a list of a <laughs> hundred benefits or something like that, or different words that express that benefit. And then on the right, you had different words that describe what the brand was about. And so that's how I came up with clear derm. And I could do a whole video, actually I could probably do a whole course on brand naming, um, but it is an art and also a science. Um, you have to come up with something that's memorable. Uh, you have to come up with something that's available. So you have to be able to register the domain name for it. Um, it needs to be available. So it needs to not have a trademark register for that name already. Um, and so you need to check a few boxes and um, that's where the experience comes in that I'm able to do this pretty quickly. So I actually came up with two brand names that I really liked. Uh, for which there was domain name available and the trademark was also available. Um, and then I moved on to the next step, which was uh, step three. So step three is what I call my polling pipeline. So that's a series of polls that I like to run on a platform. I usually use a platform called PickFu. So I'll put a link down below if you're interested in signing up for PickFu. Um, but the first poll that I ran was actually to test that my brand name was really good. And so what I did is I created a poll where I called out my target customer and I asked, um, if you were shopping for this product, which brand name, everything else being equal, which brand name would be the most appealing to you? And then I did, uh, I did something interesting, which is I listed my two brand names, but I listed a competitor brand name as well because I wanted to have, uh, I wanted to see how my, my brand name resonated with my market, uh, my, my customer, um, compared to my competitor. And so one of my two names uh, came way ahead of the competitor. I think the competitor had like 10 votes and then my uh, best brand name had like 30 votes. Um, so that's when I saw that my brand name was somewhat like three times better than uh, the top competitor that identified in the marketplace. So that's when I knew that I had a really good brand name. So I also ran uh, three other polls, but those polls were actually to kind of um, help me get a feel for what customers value the most in the product. So I ran one poll that was about um, just in general, what features would you most want in a product like this? So I had a bunch of really interesting responses that I compiled in a list. Um, and from the most important to the least important uh, by how often, for example, they mentioned like, oh, I wanna have this feature. Maybe that was mentioned like 10 times. And then this other feature was mentioned like two times or something like that. So that's how I came up with that list. And then I ran two additional polls, which were also about kind of the design of the product um, and what customers wanted uh, in terms of the design of the product itself. Polling is really fun, but it is a little bit more expensive. Uh, in this case, I used PickFu in a very kind of basic way. So I didn't use any of the um, demographic filters because that increases the cost by a lot. So I ran four polls and I think one of the polls was $65 and the three other polls were like $50. So that was, I think, $215 that I spent on polls. And then uh, once I had uh, my brand name confirmed, I went ahead and I registered a domain name for, I think it was like $3. Um, and that's how much I spent on those polls and the domain name. Now, the fourth thing that I did is I actually went ahead and I registered um, a tax-free business entity. Now, I like to do this from the start because again, I'm quite experienced and I've uh, run several businesses in the past. Um, and I just like to have a separate entity with its own bank account so that things can be clean and separate from the beginning. Uh, I like to have my finances very organized um, so I have to have my personal finances organized outside of business. So I wanted to have a separate entity where I could just transfer a set amount of money, in this case about $5,000, 
to this separate entity and then just work with that amount of money um, and make sure that uh, you know if, if things don't work then um, you know I can call it quits uh, and it doesn't have to bleed out uh, and bleed into my uh, personal finances so this whole topic is very complicated I spent thousands and thousands of dollars like in lawyer consultation and fees uh, in the past few years to find the best type of business entity that works best for me um, and so at this point in time, what I did is I registered a Wyoming LLC um, and I filed it as a partnership um, to make sure that when I open the Amazon account, uh, my name is not listed uh, on the seller page. Um, so this is, again, it's very specific um, and it deserves probably its, its own video to explain the whole thinking behind that. But the result is that as a non-US resident, so as a Canadian who lives in Thailand, um, then I'm not taxed. So this entity, this LLC won't be taxed, um, uh, will not be liable for US tax. And then since I don't uh, work, uh, perform work in the US and I don't live in the US, then I'm also not gonna be liable for US tax. But the benefit is that I'm able to use this entity to have a business bank account in the US, uh, a business credit card in the US, and just overall to be able to better operate uh, within the US under that LLC. It also makes it really easy uh, when you kind of keep things contained that way to sell the business later on uh, because you can literally just transfer the LLC and then everything kind of goes with it uh, uh, within that container. So I paid $199 for this. Um, I used to pay over $1,000 uh, to set this up as a, with a lawyer, but now I have a bit more experience and I feel more comfortable doing it myself and saving money on that as well. Now, the fifth thing that I did that I'm going to talk about in this video is I ran a 99 designs contest to come up with the first design for the product. So I could have gone on Upwork on some other freelancing website to find a designer for this project. But in, in this case, I chose 99 designs because it's much faster. And what I really like about it is you get a bunch of concepts from a whole bunch of different designers, which allows you to pick one designer that you can work with uh, on one on one projects for uh, the long term. Ultimately, I think you wanna be working with one designer. Uh, it makes things a lot cheaper and a lot simpler than running a bunch of 99 designs contests. But I think at the start of a project, if you need a designer that's really good you know, for a certain type of product or a certain type of branding style, then it makes sense to run that 99 designs contest and to find that really great designer and then keep working with them uh, in the long run. Now again, I could do a whole video on how to best run a 99 designs contest. Um, this is something I've done probably over a dozen times um, and uh, I do it in a very specific way um, and I think that it's a really great way to find a good designer for your project. So I think I paid about $349 for this. I think I took the cheaper uh, bronze package um, and I got a design that I'm really happy with. Um, and so I think that was a really good investment of money. So that's it for this video, guys. All in all, uh, so far I spent $215 on polls. I spent $199 on registering the business entity. I spent $3 on a domain name and I spent $349 on the 99designs contest. And so the total is $766 so far out of my $5,000 starting budget. I don't know exactly how many hours I spent but I know that I've done all of this in the past two weeks of working nights and weekends, uh, having a full-time job. And so my main next steps will be to get the prototype done as soon as possible, and then keep going through the process of opening up uh, the business entity and the Amazon account, which will also probably gonna take some time. And now my goal is to sell this product on Amazon, but I'm also gonna explore a slightly different path this time. I'm also gonna be reaching out to some companies uh, that might be interested in licensing the product, um, so this is something I'm going to explore this time, but I'm not sure exactly how it's going to pan out. Uh, it's something I haven't done before, but I'm really interested in learning more about licensing. So it's something I'm going to explore as well. So if you want to stay updated on this brand building challenge, definitely subscribe to the channel. Please also like the video if you got value out of this, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.